because we now have this unintended level of entanglement, it does become much more complicated uh, and expensive to maintain that application going forward. Because now any change in uh, this module here, any change to these internal classes in this module here, now may have an unintended consequence for other modules uh, which are using them. And they're, they're using these classes by opportunity rather than design. OSGI helps us by introducing module level metadata which prevents this unintended level of entanglement. At each module we can specify OSGI metadata that essentially allows us to do three things. First of all, it allows us to separate um, the packages which should be exported from a module uh, from those packages which should not be exported from the module. So in the OSGI metadata, we explicitly list the packages that this module will export, and those packages which are not listed will not be visible to any other module. Secondly, uh, the metadata allows us to express which packages need to be imported by a module. So we can see uh, which packages are required to be provided by other modules in the system. And the third thing that we can see, uh, that we can include in the OSGI metadata is we can put versions on these things so that as different um, providers of packages evolve over time, uh, those uh, changes can be versioned and the dependencies that a consuming bundle has on a providing bundle um, can be versioned so that you can rely on a particular version of a particular interface or indeed a range of versions of a particular interface. So that's a problem uh, in the underlying uh, level of modularity in the Java platform itself. The situation becomes uh, perhaps even more exacerbated in enterprise Java when we're now putting together um, complex enterprise applications that are deployed inside uh, an enterprise archive. And this is, this is where the big ears uh, come into the story. Uh, again, we have the challenge to uh, develop an enterprise application in a timely fashion. There's lots of good function out in open source. There's no point rewriting that capability. Uh, we have open source libraries that, that we would uh, like to just include inside the enterprise application. Uh, what we see over and over again, though, is in uh, a typical enterprise, we have a large suite of enterprise applications. Uh, they have many common requirements. We would see in each of these enterprise archives the same set of open source uh, and utility libraries being deployed over and over again. What we would really like to be able to do here is to evolve the Java Enterprise deployment system and make it more modular. And, and OSGI gives us an opportunity to introduce modularity not only into the development of enterprise applications, but into the deployment of them as well. So now we have OSGI metadata in each of these modules within the Enterprise Archive. We no longer have to include all of these modules over and over again inside each separate EAR file. Perhaps it's not a problem if you're just developing, if you're just deploying one large EAR file. But if you have these things repeated over and over again, um, it becomes an issue with uh, install footprint. It becomes an issue with memory footprint because each of these modules will be loaded separately for each application. And you've seen this over and over again. When you have a module that's being used in all of these different enterprise applications, which itself evolves over time, so that version 1 of this jar becomes version 1.1, you're now faced with the uh, operational difficulty of having to maintain and update each of the applications that contain uh, that common jar. What we'd like to be able to do, and what we can do with OSGI, is to exploit this metadata as part of the deployment process. And now we can move all of these common utility jars here out of the individual ear files and into an OSGI bundle repository that is understood by the deployment system. So now 
when I deploy these three enterprise applications, the enterprise applications can contain just the application-specific WAR file, for example, and its metadata is understood by the deployment system that this application requires these three other modules, but these three other modules don't have to be delivered as part of the EAR file. The deployment system can find them in a bundle repository uh, that the deployment system is, con is configured to look in. This is essentially uh, the focus of the OSGI application function that we have in the WebSphere application server since version 7. Uh, what it allows you to do is to build uh, your enterprise applications using uh, standard, uh, well understood Java EE capabilities for things like security and transactions and naming and lookup and so on and so forth, but to deploy your applications as collections of OSGI bundles rather than raw WAR files or JAR files using uh, an enterprise bundle repository which not only enables applications to be developed in a modular fashion, it also enables them to be managed and maintained over time in a modular fashion. So you can imagine, for example, in this bundle repository, you have in one place not only all of the common uh, modules that your suite of enterprise applications require, but you have all of the modules at specific versions that your enterprise applications require. And that gives you the capability not only to look after them all in one place, but it gives you the capability to update them in um, a more uh, manageable fashion so that if this application here requires version 1.1 of this bundle, um, I can have version 1.1 and version 1.0 of these bundles side by side in this bundle repository and I can choose to evolve my enterprise applications, uh, evolve them forward at the rate and pace at which I can test them rather than having to do them all in uh, a single go.